Hello, travelers. Welcome to Reach the World. For over 20 years, Reach the World has used virtual exchange to inspire youth to become curious, confident, and compassionate global citizens. My name is Tim, and this week, together with Cities E for Education campaign, we're going on a journey to explore how global citizens can put that valuable skill set to work as part of a global career. Over the course of five days, we'll be connecting with city employees in nine financial capitals across six continents. They've generously agreed to share their stories, observations, and tips for finding success in this highly interconnected global economy. For a complete listing of upcoming City Global Career Journey live stream events, check out athome.reachtheworld.org. Today, we're continuing the City Global Career Journey with a stop in Seoul, Korea to speak with City employee Amit. Amit's joining us to talk about working, living, and thriving professionally in Seoul. Before we meet Amit though, I want to welcome the teachers, students, reach the world travelers and early career professionals who are watching this live stream with us today. Please use the YouTube chat bar to let us know you're here, where you're joining from, and to share any questions you have for our guests as we go. We'll get to as many questions as we can in the next 45 minutes. All right, let's get underway. Amit, welcome to Reach the World. Thank you, Tim. It's great to have you here, Ahmed. I really appreciate you staying up late to, uh, to join us today. Um, really a special pleasure to talk to you and, and get a chance to ask you a little bit about your global career. Um, I wanna start by um, asking you specifically uh, to talk about your personal global career path um, from your earliest uh, sort of interaction with the larger world to where you are today. Can you, can you take us through that journey? Sure, Tim. Thanks for asking it. So, hello, everyone. My name is Amit Chaucharya. I am working as the head of sales and solutions for Citibank in Korea. So, where did I start? So, I started my journey after immediately after I graduated as an intern with Citibank in India. So, we had a branch in a place called Calcutta, now called Kolkata. So I interned there and immediately after completing my internship, I got an offer to join the bank in their headquarters of India, which is Mumbai. So I joined the finance and strategy unit in Mumbai. And thereafter, you know, I had a strong inclination of knowing a bank because city is a large financial institution covering several geographies and several financial services uh, Area. So I had a strong inclination of knowing the bank fully during the early part of my career. So I kind of every couple of years moved across from finance, then to what you call cash and trade unit, which is more of a transaction banking unit. And from there, I moved on to something called securities and fund services, which is more trying to help institution clients manage their investment in securities uh, and from there, I moved into something which is uh, interest me the most, which is markets. Markets is what commonly referred to as treasury as well by some of the banks, where essentially you look at all financial assets, which is FX, interest rates, commodities, equities, or credit, which is where I have stayed over the last 10 plus years. So across my 20 year journey, where the first 10 years was moving across different parts of the bank to know the bank better. And over the course of last 10 years, I have been where a place where, which I thought I liked the most and which I continue to like the most, which is uh, the markets business. How I have moved, obviously I started a journey, like I said, in Calcutta. From there on, I moved to Mumbai. And having worked in Mumbai, which is for a large part of my career, then I chose to move to Citibank in Korea. So here I am in Seoul for the last one and a half years. And it's been a very interesting journey moving not just geography, but during the course of last 20 years, moving at different parts of the bank. It's like working for a different unit. It's like getting to know new things, new people, new connections you know, different kind of a client interaction. And obviously moving geography, which is from India to Korea, was also a big, big 
shift both personally as well as professionally. Uh, personally, as having lived in India, obviously Korea was very new to me. I hadn't traveled before to Korea as, as a tourist before, so it was really new to me. And professionally as well, while it, it is part of Asia, but you know, India has a very distinct character and Korea has a very distinct and unique and vibrant character of its own. Uh, but I'm loving it. I have I have a lot of good experiences over the last uh, one and a half years since I've been here. And the adjustment from the move itself was very, very smooth, both for me and my family. Professionally as well, I have kind of learned a lot, contributed a lot, and I'm really happy that, you know, the outcome which I see out of this transition. So all in all, I really great experience. I mean, I'm curious um, what, what it was um, or what the process was like for you from, you know, um, starting your career in your home country of India and feeling sort of building the confidence that allowed you to move to Seoul and feel like that was like another environment where you could be successful. It's always sort of a process for, for people to feel um, comfortable enough with other cultures and other ways of living and other places where you could imagine yourself living and working in a totally different country and, and culture. What was that, that process like for you? Great question, Tim. And I will answer it, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, in two ways. Number one, obviously, city is a very, very global institution. And we really value diversity, you know, of, of, of all types. And, and, and if you are within the city umbrella, they really kind of uh, give you opportunity to be mobile and move as well as, uh, you know, kind of make sure that that process is very smooth. So in my case as well, I think while it was a, a big shift from India to Korea, from a distinct culture, language, you know, it's a quite a, you know, different experience. But at the same time, the process was very, very smooth. And the reason I say that is the city, you know, the city process, the city culture, the people, uh, you know, the support you get during the move was very, very amazing. So you don't have to kind of worry about things, uh, a lot of things you kind of trust that will be taken care of, and it is taken care of. So from both personally and professionally, I think uh, uh, I will give you a few anecdotal examples where you know things are different and you kind of worry while you are moving in. For example, I'm a vegetarian, and and being in Korea, uh, you know, getting vegetarian food sometimes could be a challenge, is what you used to hear. Uh, but frankly, for me, it wasn't so difficult if you are cooking at home and and there is enough and more places uh, you get in Seoul which serve uh, vegan or vegetarian meal so it's, 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 it's okay and, and number two is uh, the climatic conditions are different you know Korea has extreme uh, winter and uh, you know we get it to minus 20 and coming from Mumbai which is very very you know tropical tropical weather where you know it doesn't go less than plus 20 throughout the year but again I, there is uh, you know once you have the nice jacket uh, the cold doesn't worry you as much and, and, and similarly, language, obviously, uh, you know, sometimes you feel that not too many people in Korea speak the English language, which you are used to uh, in some of the geographies like India. But again, I think that's, again, changing the, my entire team speaks English, they understand English. Uh, you know, there are a lot of multinational clients here who speak English. There are a lot of Korean clients who are global clients who understand the language. And obviously you have a good team supporting you and uh, and the people here in general are very warm and welcoming. So if you kind of add up all these things and then kind of look at it. So while yes, it's a big transition, but was it smooth? Was it interesting? Did I like it? Would you like to do it again? Answer is a big yes. <laughs> oh, great. That's a great perspective. I'm, uh, I saw when you... Uh, mentioned that you're a vegetarian. We have a, a great two world traveler who has studied abroad in Seoul on the call today, and I saw her laughing. She immediately knew what you're talking about about the difficulties of finding a 
uh, vegetarian meal, um, and we'll we'll bring her on the call later. But that's an interesting point. Um, I, that's what you said is a great segue into sort of our second area um, today, uh, where we're, I wanted to ask you specifically, and we've asked a bunch of your colleagues, what it's like to work in your market specifically. So, what what is unique about working and living in Seoul? Um, is there is there anything that that you found that you really need to know and understand as a citizen of the globe, um, what, what do you need to know to be successful in, in Seoul? Sure. So it's not like one thing, but like I was trying to explain, uh, you know, people are very warm here and, and, and they, they kind of uh, accommodate and adjust and very welcoming. So obviously English is not the preferred language here, but I think most of the youngsters here now do speak English. So if you know Korean or you can pick up a little bit of Korean, that, that helps you gel well in, in a much better or a much smoother way. But even if you don't know, I think with technology available to translate and, and, and people there to kind of help you, I think it's not such a big struggle, but you can, uh, you, you can definitely do well and survive uh, pretty well here. Uh, in terms of infrastructure and technology i think korea is one of the advanced uh, economies and if you look at telecom infrastructure it is one of the first countries to have 5g technology for example so given that we are living and talking during the covid environment where technology plays a uh, kind of a large part in terms of making sure we are socially connected despite being uh, physically distanced so i think having a good technology platform and strong 5G connection, that definitely is a positive. And more so if you're coming from some of the other parts of Asia where the telecommunication may not be as strong, I think this, I think this is one of the strengths of this country. And even, even the infrastructure in general, whether it's road transport or public transport or whether you need to drive, I think it's pretty easy to kind of adjust here. So you don't struggle in terms of uh, your day-to-day -day experiences. And, it, and from, a, from a market perspective, Korea, while being a small country geographically, I think it's a fairly vibrant economy. It's a, it's, it, uh, it's, it's a fairly large uh, economy in terms of GDP. And it's an interesting geography in terms of there, is, there are a large number of Korean conglomerates who are doing business in the rest of Asia. There's a big ones we obviously hear and know of are the Samsungs and LGs of the world. And there are obviously, there are many, many large uh, global corporates who have establishments in Korea. So that way it doesn't look like, uh, like a very remote or a different world. You feel very, very familiar. You feel very, whether you are coming from the US, whether you're coming from the Europe or whether you're part of the Asia, you see a lot of familiar names, you familiar brands and you know, familiar environment. So those things definitely kind of help you. And the second perspective is, uh, do we have a lot of expats here? Answer is yes. You, you see a lot of, you know, if you're coming from outside, obviously uh, you also end up uh, seeing a lot of expat uh, here from many of the multinational companies and even some of the local companies. So kind of you develop a social network, uh, which is very, very strong here. Not so large, small, but strong. So again, that helps you kind of uh, push through and, you know, both uh, as socially as well. Okay, that's a great perspective. I'm wondering um, on, a, on sort of a more um, detailed level, what is your average day like uh, working? Um, you know, you don't, don't give us too many specifics, but like, what, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis and how might it be different, do you think, from working in some other city? Uh, the first major difference in today's context is I'm able to drive into office every day, work from office, and I can get to meet more than 50% of my team members, which I think is fairly unique in this environment. Uh, where we are living in, where most of us or most of our colleagues, uh, different parts of the world are forced to or have to work from home. So uh, that's kind of a different. And uh, for me, I have been in office uh, every single day since the beginning of the year, because frankly, there was no lockdown. 
So I typically start my day early, be in office, you know, regular work, meeting team. Like some of the discipline, uh, you know, Asian markets, you have a lunch hour, which is like noon to one, where you kind of end up meeting some of your team members over lunch, and then you kind of wrap up the day. Sometimes a little early, but sometimes typically, if you have calls with your regional or global offices, that may make you sit a little late in the office. And the routine kind of a little bit for me personally, I adjust uh, to the weather. So if the, the weather is nice, I end up leaving office early to go for a run or a walk in the evening. And if it is cold or getting cold now, then then, then possibly I may not choose that option and be in office till slightly later and uh, then be at home. I have a family here, my wife and two children. So we typically eat at home half the time and sometimes we go out and that's kind of wraps up the day. Do you, as part of your work, do you travel around Asia at all or even further abroad? See, yes and no. I used to travel a lot, obviously, but this question during this year is a difficult or a different answer. But yes, in general, yes, uh, my work uh, does uh, make me travel uh, both within Asia and outside. And uh, kind of I have enjoyed that uh, during my earlier roles and even when I arrived in Korea last year. In fact, last year was one of my busiest years in terms of travel when I was transitioning as well as working and meeting clients and attending to office needs. So it was very, very hectic. And I think this year has averaged it out completely with zero travel outside of Korea. Uh, but interestingly, within Korea, you're kind of, you can drive through the whole city, uh, the whole country. Uh, the rail network is superb. The airlines are working domestically. So, so yes, there is a fair bit of travel relative to what we see at, uh, in the globe this time of the year. Right. Fantastic. I know a lot of people are sort of enjoying staying put a little bit, knowing that someday soon they'll, they'll have to return to, to widespread travel. Um, all right, let's move on to our, our third topic. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically, you've been such a great mentor to so many Reach the World travelers who've been lucky enough to visit you um, and your colleagues at the city office in Seoul. Um, and sort of speaking to that same audience and that same age range um, to a variety of people across the US, I'm wondering if you have any specific advice for young people who are really interested in Korea, who are maybe studying you know, Korean language or are interested in working in this region of the world, um, what tips would you have for them to be successful in a job like yours or in uh, an office space like yours where I'm sure there are, are sort of some global or universal skills that they would need to have? Sure, Tim. I think the first thing which I will highlight the most and which I think value the most is you should like what you do, right? So if you are passionate about something, I think pursue that. That will definitely give, make you give your best. That will definitely make you feel the happiest and that definitely will give the best output as well. So if, if you are interested in a career in financial services, for example, I think city is is one of the best places you would find globally and not just in korea i'm talking about globally as well where we kind of deal with every possible financial product for every possible customer segment and if you really interest you and we are present across geographies and mobility is something which we value we value diversity of thought of experiences of background so it's a really wonderful place to be in this environment so the number one thing which I mentioned is you should be passionate about or you should like what you do. And number two is, uh, you know, having studied and coming fresh from university, which is what most of you are. I think uh, the, the world is open for you to explore. But again, uh, if I have to pinpoint Korea, like Tim, you asked that, how is it working for Korea? And I talk so much about it. So I'm loving it. You know, this is my second year here. I have no complaints, it's a wonderful country. Very, very warm people, different four seasons. There are fantastic large local companies which are going global and big brands. 
there are many, many large corporations who have offices here. Like I mentioned, the entire infrastructure is wonderful. Uh, you know, setting into Korea or, you know, settling in Korea is not too difficult. Despite not knowing the language, the people are helpful and technology helps you. And, you know, while reading or learning to read Korean is not too difficult, you can frankly pick it up in maybe less than a couple of months. And, and it is as international a city as you would imagine, and it is getting more international by the day. So, uh, you know, working or living in Seoul is a wonderful experience, fairly well connected to the rest of the world. Like you mentioned, you are from the West Coast and you know, it's not too far from there. Relatively speaking, uh, as Asia is as close to the West Coast as you can get. So, uh, so it's, 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 it's like uh, a great place to be. I mean, I have to ask you, when you were first sort of getting started with your career in India, um, is it, did you always want to be in the financial world or was there something else that you maybe went to school for or thought you might want to be before you started down this path? Sure, interesting. So when, obviously I've studied commerce and finance and accounts. So when you study so much of finance and accounts, you typically dream about working for financial services. But when I started working for financial services, I remember, you know, getting into the, the kind of introductory training and where HR asks you, what's your long-term plan? And I specifically remember my long-term plan at that point of time was doing some kind of a, you know, environment-friendly agricultural activity in some remote part of the world. I think that's what I remember I mentioned. So I don't know whether uh, it was then, but I think uh, maybe somewhere down the line, it will still resonate with what I want to do. But I think I've loved what I've done so far and uh, coming and being into finance since my education and early part of my career. I think it's, it's, it's something which I have loved. And I, I think if somebody is interested in pursuing a career in financial services, like I was mentioning before, there is nothing which city does not do in the sense you get an opportunity to kind of touch several aspects of uh, business, whether it's product, asset class, or plant segment. So we have it all, or geographical, you know, presence or perspective. So I think uh, it's an interesting and, and an extremely vibrant place to be in. You, when you got your first job with City, um, you know, everybody talks about getting your foot in the door with a, a corporation or a company or an organization that you're excited to work for and has a lot of opportunities. Do you have anything that you did? You've obviously achieved a, a great deal of success within City. What, what did you do that sort of helped you from that, that first job that you had with City rise to, you know, this? person in charge of a whole team in, in Seoul? So doing what you are entrusted with in the best of manner kind of helps you, you know, achieve what you want to in the sense, if you're given a mandate of doing something, I can give your best to it. I think that's the simple secret uh, to success uh, in any place is what I would uh, think so. And the same has worked well. So do your best in what you are doing right now. But at the same time, you have a long-term objective or a near-term objective of what next you want to do. Start preparing yourself for what you want to get into next, which will definitely be a good combination of giving your best at the same time preparing. So it's like a bifocal vision, seeing the near, near term and also having a vision for the something coming into the future as well. Okay, that's fantastic advice. And I'm gonna ask one more question before I, I welcome some of our Reach the World travelers on to ask you their questions. Uh, I'm curious, when you, when you first got to Seoul, was there one thing in particular that was sort of the, the hard, hardest thing for you to adapt to or get used to? Um, you, you mentioned the weather and, and some of the, the things like that, but culturally speaking, um, is there one thing that, that really struck you as a very different from where you were coming from? And, and how did you sort of make that part of your, your new life in Seoul? So yes and no in the sense, uh, you know, obviously Korea has a unique uh, and a different uh, 
cultural aspect. But when I blend it with city, I think the city culture is also kind of uh, wide prevailing in the sense. So I was within the city world, which was blended with the unique Korean culture. So there were some things which were easy to do, some things which were slightly, uh, you know, you need to kind of understand and then kind of get in, uh, used to it. Uh, but like, uh, like I was mentioning before, it's, it's not too difficult. So I don't want to find to frighten you saying the culture is difficult and don't think of being here. No, nothing like that. I think people also respect a uh, different perspective here. So if you are a foreigner, I think they kind of give you that uh, space to kind of adjust. But if you are a local, obviously there are cultural nuances to it, but that will not hinder your uh, adjustment or uh, you know getting into the groove of the Korean environment. So I would say, frankly, it's, it should not be a worry or it should not be a concern getting into Korea. All right, that's great advice. Um, I'm going to welcome in our, we've got two Reach the World travelers who are with us today, Chelsea and Angela. Uh, I'm going to bring you both onto the screen. Hello to you both. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm going to sort of start with Chelsea because I know Chelsea Hi. has a connection to Seoul. And Chelsea, go ahead with your question, please. Hi, uh, thank you, Tim. And thank you, Amit. Um, I think I just have two, que two short questions. So the first one is, um, I know uh, in the past few years that Seoul or South Korea in general has become really known in the global scene, maybe because of um, uh, the Korean pop culture, their technology, or even nowadays just with their COVID response. I know it's becoming uh, really famous. Um, so how is city adapting to this change? Because um, when I was there, I also noticed that um, there's a lot of foreigners now who have become interested in South Korea. So how is city adapting to this? Whether it be by, is there a change in the amount of foreigners who are being hired or is there like changes in the work culture just because it's more diverse now? Sure, Chelsea. Thank you so much, and uh, good to that you have seen Seoul and you have visited and met one of my colleagues in Korea. So great to hear that. Uh, so yes, from from a city perspective, we were always, uh, like I was mentioning, a global platform and very welcoming in terms of uh, mobility and diversity. So within Korea as well, yes, there there is a healthy mix of uh, non. Uh, of, of global people who are living in Korea within city as well as a lot of local talent here. Uh, so it, it's it's a healthy mix which has uh, been here for uh, since a long time and that uh, that global culture or the global uh, uh, you know fabric of city prevails in Korea as well. And and, and I, nothing uh, and like I'm I have been here for almost two years now and and I have kind of seen. Uh, a lot of people come in and move out and, and everybody has a equally fantastic uh, journey having lived in Korea, having worked for city. And uh, going ahead I, as well, I would imagine that, uh, you know, this would uh, continue. And the second thing, uh, not just specific to Korea, but uh, more to, you know, city is that we have almost kind of... Uh, in promoting this aspect of mobility, if somebody wants to move somewhere or, or we think there is a possible need of a particular kind of talent or an experience or a cross exchange of ideas or something which can be success transferred from one place to another, I think people has been our most effective tool in terms of achieving that objective and we continue to kind of do that. And me having, you know, come here and uh, you know, personally, what I have done for the business and what I have uh, kind of enriched myself with the exposure and experience. I think it's a win win uh, when we do that. Thank you. Um, yeah, just one more question, if that's okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. so um, I, I've heard you talk about the challenges of, you know, just the general moving in, being in Korea. But I was curious about the challenges in the work culture itself. Like, can you give um, you know somewhat specific examples into 
these challenges that you've encountered and perhaps how you overcame them? Right. A great question, uh, Chelsea. And uh, uh, there are a lot of small and uh, uh, big things which you get to understand and which, which you get to use to once you are here. Uh, again, some of the things uh, which is kind of a I would not say unique, but different in Korea is is is, is the culture of uh, you know respect for age, respect for hierarchy, or respect for uh, you know uh, who you are versus uh, within the organizational structure. So sometimes uh, you have uh, people don't tend to kind of object to kind of give a different view. So as as a leader or as a team head, if you kind of start a meeting with saying here is an idea and this is my view then possibly you will not get any other view in that meeting mm -hmm. so you kind of learn it in a different manner than then you kind of don't express your view to start with but get your encourage your team members to kind of give their views and opinions but again uh, you know uh, do take it with a pinch of salt because things are changing and and you know uh, as you see in any part of the world uh, all uh, you know, a lot of youngsters are studying abroad in different parts of the world. You know, they are getting used to the international culture and, and they're kind of getting away from the uniqueness or the, you know, the strong uh, attributes of any local culture when they are joining a, a large or a multinational institution like city. So again, that's changing. But since you asked me, I think there is something which... Uh, I had heard and I kind of experienced a little bit, but again, that's changing very fast. And as you get into your jobs, hopefully very soon, you may not get to experience those nuances as much as possibly it was there earlier. Thank you. That was very insightful. Thank you, Chelsea, for that great sure. question. Uh, Angela, let's bring you on. Do you have a question you want to ask this morning? Um, yes, uh, thank you so much for um, meeting with us in the first place. Um, my question is, as somebody who was not the most mathematical person, um, <laughs> um, just keep me away from math classes, um, but um, I heard you say a lot of things about like, if you're more financial, you go in city. Um, my question is, are there any non-financial aspects in city that allows for traveling? Um, I know maybe law, but other than law? No, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, I, I would be wrong if I say we have only people who are inclined towards uh, finance who are part of city. Uh, obviously, city is a very large institution. And like you mentioned, we have people who have done law, who are lawyers in the team, people who have done marketing and who are kind of uh, responsible for a lot of our sales and marketing efforts, both on the consumer and the corporate side. And people who are, you know, so obviously there are different different pieces. Uh, there, there, there is a team which is doing branding. There's a team which is working on technology. You know, technology is, is like all pervasive in, in any industry and in any geography or any business you are into. So. There are obviously unique skills which uh, is valued. And above all, like I was mentioning about diversity, we are not just hiring or grooming one type of person. I think we really value different opinion, different ideas, different perspective. So even in the financial world, there are things which you can learn, which you can pick up. But if you have a strong skill set in any part of it and, and you are really passionate of uh, being in banking, uh, I think it's a great place to be in without getting too worried about numbers because there is the computers and supercomputers and technology to help you with the numbers anyways. And we really uh, need that extra passion to be uh, successful in whichever role you are interested in. Great question, Angela. Do you have another question you wanna ask? Okay, you're good. Um, thanks for that great question, I appreciate it. Um, we've got a question from Roman on our live stream. He wanted to know, it looks like he's maybe a recent finance grad, um, and he's graduating this or he's graduating this year and looking to enter the industry, um, but doesn't have a ton of like relevant work experience yet. What would be your advice for people like Roman, people in that situation who would love to get their, their foot in the door 
um, but maybe don't have a lot of advice, um, experience in the industry yet? So, again, as city, we really encourage, uh, you know, hiring young graduates from various institutes around the globe. And we have recently announced a program as well, where we, we have kind of uh, made a promise to hire a higher number of graduates given the environment we are into. So every year in different parts of the world and within different parts of the bank, we hire fresh graduates from various colleges with varied experience and exposures. So I think he has a great opportunity in terms of reaching out and 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 we and we have a great program and and we run it in a very very organized and institutional manner and in different countries and different parts of the world there there are run little little differently but i think it's 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 one of the best programs i've personally been one of the beneficiaries of this program when i joined the bank uh, a long time ago now so i think it's a it's it's a great opportunity for someone who is exploring a role in a large uh, financial services uh, institution, and that's uh, and for him, I think uh, he has uh, all the way to look forward to. It's a great question, Roman. Great question or great answer, Amit. I'm curious, um, especially because you sort of started with City, where you grew up. Um, and then move to a different market for a lot of our travelers who may have sort of the wanderlust and are excited about the travel component specifically of, of working for a, a global organization. Would you recommend that, um, that young people sort of get their foot in the door closer to home um, and then look for opportunities to incorporate more of their, their global experiences by moving to another market like you did? Um, or are there other ways that you've seen your colleagues um, approach that situation? Yes, I have seen both ways. And my personal experience was getting into the bank uh, in my home country, which was India, and then going out. But there have been umpteen examples of uh, uh, people who have joined the bank in different parts of the world, not necessarily their home markets. Possibly if they graduate from X country, say UK, for example, they end up joining the bank in some other part of the world where it need not necessarily be the home country, and they have done tremendously well as well. So uh, there is no one right answer. But if you are looking for a long-term career in financial services, frankly, like I mentioned uh, to my kids, uh, I always say geography is history in a sense. I don't worry about which part of the world. I think uh, if you are open to exploring new things, I think you need not worry about where you join. Okay, great. Um, if you were... Uh, uh young person in the United States who had a specific interest in Korea, excuse me. <clears throat> um, are there any skills that they could work on now that would make them especially competitive for a job, you know, halfway around the world in Seoul? Uh, would speaking Korean help them? Uh, would, you know, having studied abroad in Seoul help them? Would uh, a really special interest or deep understanding of Korean culture help them? Are, are there any things like that that would make uh, somebody more competitive for Seoul, a position in Seoul specifically? Sure. So again, I think there are two ways I can respond. I think being adaptable definitely will make you more competitive. And uh, being in Korea, I think knowing Korean would be a definite advantage. So if you are an English-speaking individual coming from the U.S. and you also know Korean, I think is a very, very strong combination uh, here. If I have to give like one thing which will help you coming from the States to here. And by the way, you have a lot of people from the States here and you have a lot of uh, Koreans who do travel to the States for study and come back here. So from a cultural adjustment perspective, that won't be a big issue. All right, great. That's really helpful. I feel like we've, we've grilled you with all the tough questions now. I want to give you a, an easy question to finish this off. Um, you have um, sort of over the last year and a half or two years gotten comfortable in Seoul. Um, for people who have never been to Seoul, 
but it's maybe on the top of their list uh, for when uh, that we can travel again and, and we can visit. Um, what is the one or two places you highly recommend they visit or something they do in Seoul that you have really enjoyed? Right, for people who love food, even as a vegetarian, I can tell you it's a lovely place for a different kind of cuisine and Korean food is really popular. K-pop and the Korean culture and, and, and it is obviously now more global and visible to all. And in terms of places, I think Korea is, uh, you know, in terms of with different seasons, I think it offers a lovely, you know, snow experience in winter if somebody has to ski. At the same time, it has some lovely beaches uh, and Jeju happens to be the most popular island here and a beach destination. And it's kind of an all seasons place. So that's like a must do for anybody looking to explore or visit Korea. All right, great. That's some, some great insight, um, both professionally and for when we get to come and visit South Korea sometime soon, hopefully, um, that, that we can all uh, process. Thank you so much. Um, and I really want to thank you um, for, for taking the time today. You've been an amazing city local host with Reach the World. You welcome several Reach the World travelers, um, two cities offices in Seoul, and we really appreciate that. And so do they. Um, your career advice has been invaluable, and I want to thank you for sharing today your global career journey with us. Thank you also to our entire on-camera. Uh, Chelsea, Angela, thanks for joining us today, um, our on-camera crew, and our live stream audiences, all of whom had great questions. Reach the World City global career journey continues this week with stops in Dublin, Singapore, Sydney, and more. How does living and working in those cities compare to what we just heard from Amit? I'll be asking city employees in those cities the same questions in the coming days so we can make head-to-head -head comparisons and you can take the next steps on your personal career journeys. Uh, special thanks to the City E for Education campaign and to all our many city volunteers for making this experience possible. You can check out the full lineup of upcoming events at athome.reachtheworld.org. We're off to Dublin, Ireland next, so I hope to see you all there. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Chelsea, Angela, and thanks, everyone, from uh, the Reach the World program. Bye-bye on behalf of City.